Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. We've got another video for today. And in this one, we're taking a look at the newly released ally on test server, Shazam. Now, presently, we don't have a lot of information available in terms of how it's going to be released or how it's obtained. Right now, it's presently on the Cyborg vendor for 500 source marks like the others. This could come uh, simply on the vendor. This could come part of a time capsule. It could be a marketplace release. Don't know that information. In terms of when, same thing. Uh, the, the Christmas seasonal comes out December the 8th, uh, which is also on test server, which I'll have a video tomorrow on. Uh, so it could be releasing there, it could be releasing part of a time capsule, who knows. That that information we don't have, the information we do have available is what the ally consists of. So taking a look here, we've got Shazam, two, uh, obviously combo ability, two support abilities. Now this new UI makes it pretty small and kind of hard to read, so I'll try on the details pan, it might be a bit easier. So we've got the uh, combat ability. So fires a lightning bolt that heals allies and damage electrifies enemies, chains up between up to four targets. So the bolt of Zeus. We have the power of Shazam Ali. Uh, activating an ally's combat ability grants might and precision for 30 seconds. At rank 10, it's 6% might, 3% prec. Purity of heart, which is a healer row. Specific passive, so weapon attacks grant stacks of plus 1% restoration up to a maximum number of stacks. Using priority heal or group heal ability removes all stacks cooldown 0.5 seconds. And then at rank 10 is a max of 25 stacks. And then I'm sure it's gonna go into his, like his origin story and everything else. So let's break down all these passives and these combat abilities and let's take this ally through its paces. So normally this would be the section where I break away to my spreadsheet and break down each rank in terms of its damage. Um, there's no point of doing that presently with Shazam because the damage values are definitely going to be adjusted. Uh, just because of, of uh, I mean, the example that I'll show you, but uh, it's just how it attacks as well. So we'll, we'll sh I'll show you on the sparring targets first, and then we'll go into like a more uh, real world example. Somebody's getting a combat here. So the whole point is if we uh, read back to his combat ability, where it says fires a lightning bolt that chains between up to four targets. Uh, the healing allies, uh, once again, I'll show that in open world as well. But the, the aspect here is the whole chain damage aspect. So if I am in combat now, if I summon him, he's going to fire one bolt that's going to chain between everything else. And if we go to our logs here, as you can see, you know, it's astronomical damage. So that combat parser there was 2.3 million because every chain damage is hitting. So it's hitting the, the bolt. So his one target's hitting for 400k. Then all the chain damage is hitting for 400k. And then it chains an additional time after me for 400k as well so it's chaining up to four targets here but it's also hitting so this is this one hit this is the chain and then it's also getting an, an additional uh hit from me as well so this was at like 395 i think cr because i don't think 396 was uh, pushed up but uh you know obviously 2.3 million is not realistic considering that's going to continually change as well so you know if it uh, you know pops to the eight targets i mean uh we might as well do that now i can show an example of the leak hole so we'll, because this was five targets, we'll show you eight, and then we'll we'll jump to the real world, uh, open world, uh, just to show you how this actually impacts uh, combat as well. Okay, so we're in the leak hall example. This will be eight targets. Same thing. We'll get into combat first. Make sure we clear the parse. Okay, so now we can summon them. And as you can see, that would change, uh, that changed much higher than four targets there. So if we go back to the parser there, that's 3.5 million parse in nine hits. And it's hitting each target for 400k. So it's hitting uh, the, the single target bolt and then all the chain. And then once again, me for 400k as well, because it's chaining. It's counting the player or me as a target. So it's chaining off everything. So it's essentially some kind of, you know, think of it as like a, OP uh, arc lightning. 
So that's why there's no point of really breaking down the damage aspect of it because this is obviously going to change. I mean, this is this is worse than Zoom when when Zoom uh, first came out or Flash uh, back when Allies released and they were doing like a million damage. You know, you can't have it each target. You know, you know think of like you're in a raid with more than eight targets. Every single target is going to change for 400k. On top of the Eye of the Gemini damage. And um, imagine Berserk, because ally damage counts towards Berserk. So then you, you, you're going to have any kind of Rage DPS beyond completely just broken <laughs> from uh, the Berserk damage. So that's why there's no point. This is obviously going to get adjusted before it's released. Uh, so, But I'll show you a little nuance as well in Open World that may carry over, but I may not. So let's, uh, let's jump to Open World and show that example. So the issue with his ability is that it revolves around the whole aspect of a chaining damage. So you have to think of it, Shazam's ability is only one hit. So if we've got uh, three looters here, we're just gonna bring this one lower. So I'm surrounded by three targets. Now if I summon Shazam, he's gonna target that looter, eventually. And you can see in the combat log, he knocked out the looter but it didn't chain any damage to these other two allies. They're completely full health. So if we uh, just get a, a range here so we can talk. And if I go back to my parser, I mean, obviously it was only like 50k because it, it uh, Shazam killed that uh, NPC. So there was nothing to chain to. So that's where it's going to be a real issue, especially like in content or, or in open world, anything like that, is that if Shazam accidentally kills a target, you lost all your damage. It's not going to chain at all. So that's why I have to make sure. I mean, this this could change most likely to carry over because this this is basically just how Shazam is going to work, how it, the chain ability. Uh, they may The developer may adjust that, it may not, but it's one thing. It's something for... Obviously, the AOE damage is going to be adjusted because that's you know that chain damage is ridiculously uh, overpowered. But uh, how it works uh, is going to have to be something up to up in the air. So taking a look at the first passive, Power of Shazamily. Activating an Allies' combat ability grants six percent might and three percent precision for thirty seconds. Now, this one is where the debate is going to lie uh, because this has the potential to change the meta in terms of running Upper Aquaman for just for the supercharge reduction. Because, and even my, I don't have the exact answer here. I've done some testing. There is obviously a percentage increase from uh, using Shazam versus not using Shazam. And it, ultimately, it's going to depend on the type of content and groups that you're running. Because when you think of Emperor Aquaman, yes, uh, if you're in a, a Gemini spam group, you're probably running two superchargers, two 5Ks, uh, and you're in that 90 second window, most likely you're going to get at least two of the 30 second superchargers, sometimes three. So you could, you will definitely be seeing at least a 10K or 15 second reduction. And allies have a 90 second cooldown, so that's you're getting your ally back in 75 seconds. Now, on paper, that sounds great. You're getting your ally faster. That means you can do more damage faster. Ally uh, damage also counts towards uh, Berserk and Eye of the Gemini. So as long as you have a supercharged to proc and your ally off cooldown, you get that extra damage boost. But a lot of the times, you may not get that full uh, actual balance. Like, say, for example, if you're in a hallway or something and you summon your ally, you could be doing the ally on like one or two targets, and that's it. You're not going to get the full uh, damage value out of that ally. Where if you run Shazam, now every time you summon it for 30 seconds, you're going to have the extra might and prec and with only 60 second downtime. Because when you're not running Emperor Aquaman, it's still going to be a, a 90 second cooldown. So you get 30 seconds uptime, 60 seconds downtime, which is still not bad. It, it's very consistent in terms of that. And you guys, and you summon get to control it. Also, if you're summoning your ally with your Eye of the Gemini, that means your Eye of the Gemini is not only going to have your boosted ally damage, but also your boosted stats uh, for the next 30 seconds. If you're swapping in like, if you're swapping in Philosopher Stone and have the, the double duration for the buff, uh, then you get the boosted for that. If you're running like Neo Venom Boost as a supercharge, for the entire duration of Neo Venom Boost, you'd have the extra 6% stats as well. So there's, there's plenty, uh, argument that you could run Shazam 
uh, in addition to uh, Batman. You still run Batman or Laughs. That's still always going to be the meta. You get 5% uh, stats as well as you get the critical chance. And then you get the, the chance for health as well. So I, I feel like, yes, maybe some person could mess around in like a Super Gemini spam group. You could run both uh, Shazam and, and Brockaman. I think that's a possibility. Uh, because once again, Batman Laughs is RNG. If you're running content that has very quick, because same thing, you get uh, um, uh, a 30 second cooldown on your Karprox. So say, for example, if a fight's going to last not very long at all, you definitely want to run Emperor Aquaman and Shazam Ali because you, then you get that full bonus. Where if you're missing a Karprox, you may get like the, you know, uh, the power regen car proc something like that that's not going to be beneficial you were or health car proc so if you don't get that might proc or that uh, critical car proc it's not really doing you a lot of bonus as as a dps especially in content that's going to be very short like the boss fight's only going to be a couple minutes long so i think this this discussion is going to warrant further testing but i do feel that uh shazam is a 100 percent um level ally He's much better than pretty much any other option here. I mean, yeah, you could you could argue uh, like Death Metal Batman is, is super useful if you're like a controller based power set stuff like that. Like you I mean Superman for tanking, Lex Luthor for tanking stuff like that. But at least for this passive, uh, this is much better DPS passive than especially like Batman, which which has the uh, only the uh, beginning of damage and then it has to reset off the counter everything like that. You got a, a Queen Diana's uh, don't weaken the one percent two percent when you break out, which you know we may not always break out so this one the power shazam Lee, i do feel that it's going to be very beneficial i'm going to be loving it for sure it's just going to be whether or not the meta is going to be dps shazam and emperor Aquaman, or if it's going to be like a dps ally batman or laughs emperor Aquaman, or if it's going to be uh super like a like a dps ally uh, Batman who laughs and Shazam. So it's going to be basically three different options of, of meta rotations for DPS allies that could uh, have the potential to be better than some of the others. But enough of talk. Let's show you what actually what it does. So I'm going to equip the ally Shazam confirm slot two. So all I have to do is summon my ally and you're going to see this red animation that goes around me. This means that I have buff stats. So I was at 191,000 roughly before now I'm at 200,000. So I got, you know, just just with end game stats, you're getting an extra 10,000 might. And then basically you continue on a rotation. You're going to continually see the animation kind of proc randomly. I'm sure there's a, a timer based on it. So you know that's still active, just like it did right there. And then it's eventually going to expire. And drop back down. So that's what it does. Yeah, there you go. It drops right, down, right back down again to almost 192,000. So... That's going to be the discussion. Uh, I'll put it up on the screen here too. I did a comparison, just a, a parsing. Uh, it, I mean, it is a small percentage increase. I mean, that's just taking electric as an example, a very small sample size. But considering my the crit chance was like 0.3% difference in one hit count, that's about as close as a, of an exact parser comparison you're going to get as electric uh, in terms of like uh, strategy card procs and everything else. So basically, I'll put it up on the screen here. The three different uh, ally combinations these ones uh one of these three combinations is going to be better say for example if you're rage you're you're continually using your supercharge because or, or rage or electric for example with circuit breaker as well so something like that will lend itself more to emperor Aquaman because you're constantly using your supercharge so in a 90 second window you could get off you know like 15,000 20,000 worth of supercharge in gemini span groups which will obviously drastically lower the cooldown of your ally to pair with either gemini especially either gemini and berserk in rage's case but in other situations where, you know, 90% of the game is not going to be running in those gem spam groups, you want something that's more practical, more reliable, and that's where running with uh, Shazam, Batman, or Laughs, you constantly have 30 seconds of that boost of damage with a 60 second downtime. So that's where that becomes more practical. So one of the three combinations will be meta uh, in the future, 100%. But uh, certainly I would level Shazam just for this passive. And I don't really see it being changed, drastically adjusted, and like that is working fine. There are some allies where it doesn't work with that. That'll get corrected. I know, for example, like Black Adam, it doesn't work with his passive. But uh, the ones that I've tested have. Not that he'd be using Black Adam for DPS ally anyway. So let's take a look at the second passive. All 
Okay, so taking a look at the second passive, we have the introduction of a healer-based passive that's designed specifically for healers. So we're looking at Purity of Heart. When uh, weapon attacks grant stacks of plus 1% restoration up to a maximum of 25 stacks, using a priority healer group heal ability removes all stacks. Cooldown 0.5 seconds. So uh, to touch on one thing first, right now you'll see I'm in DPS dance. So if we look at my base restoration, 90,940. If I start doing weapon taps, you'll see my restoration does not change. Now, there's going to be some people that want to mention, well, it should work, you know, in all roles. The issue that that's going to lead to is it's going to break certain aspects of, of roles. Specifically, if you look at, say, like ice and fire tanks, uh, now you're going to, because obviously tanks don't have a priority healer group heal. So that means they're going to be at constantly a 25% buffed restoration throughout the entire instance. And then you have issues with like the fire doing like a restoration heal build. You've got issues using like fire tanks using Clarion build and then having increased heals from Clarion's restoration. You know, you've got weird combinations with like Demon Fang and everything else. So it's just, it, it's going to break too many things if it works for all roles. Uh, it's a healer passive. It, it should work in healer role. I know some people are going to bring that up, but it's just, it's not going to, it, it leads to situations we don't want. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be that kind of options. So let me just get in healer stance here, show you how it works. So in healer stance, my restoration base is 114.517. And if I do like five hits here, 117.885 and et cetera. So if I, and then if I use like a priority, it's gonna reset it back to 114.517. And then we'll just do uh, taps here. I'm using taps. I'll get into that in a moment. I just want to show you what that 25 tap uh, or weapon hit is going to be in terms of the maximum. And it will come parent while I'm not using the combo in a moment. So now we're at 25. It's going to be 131357. And same thing, my hit, my hit counters disappear, but obviously it's still going to be, my restoration is still going to be buffed. And if I want to do like another five hits or whatever to bring it to technically 30, it's not going to change. And if I use a group heal, it's going to reset it. 114.517. So there is a little of a nuance in terms of weapon mastery. Weapon mastery, it doesn't count all the weapon hits. So uh, for example, I'm brawling, I'm going to use Shrugum Storm Mastery. I get to seven hits. Seven hits brings me to 115.864 restoration. And if I reset that, just to show you the reset, and if I do seven taps, I'm at 119.232. So individual weapon taps, it, it uh, completely counts. Combos, either it's an internal cooldown or just it doesn't count all the weapon mastery combos. Same thing with like power regeneration, doesn't count uh, all the weapon mastery hits. So now if we reset it, Similarly, combo-wise, it it's, uh, has a similar effect with uh, regular weapon combos as well. So, for example, I'll do Flurry Shot. We got seven hits of Flurry Shot, which would be 117.211. And if I reset it, just to show that it's reset, and then do seven taps. I'm 117.85, so it's, it's it's close. It just it didn't count. What looks like one of the ticks of flurry shot, uh, but it's it's you can obviously you can see the difference as well. So if I say if I reset it here, we'll do rolling Shrugum Star Mastery just to show it again. Seven hits, and I've got 116.537 roughly. And if I reset that, you saw it was 116. Now if I do swap to a flurry shot combo. seven hits again and it's 117 so you get more restoration stacks built from a regular weapon combo versus a weapon mastery combo i mean once again it's going to be the up to the healer itself because it's going to reset each time you do a priority and a group heal now some of these combinations especially with like electric here as a gem spam build uh your only heals are going to be your priority and group heals you're going to because you're spamming gemini with everything else so you don't have a choice. If you're if you're going to want to heal, you're going to have to use these abilities anyway, or one of these abilities. You just can't wait and spam Galvanize off cooldown and wait till your restoration is built up. You know, there's some situations that may work, 
Um, alternatively, if you say if you're a water healer, at least you can get away with like shielding. And then um, say you could do like uh, you could stack your solace uh, builds and then do uh, your shields. And then basically you can sit, you can really build up your weapon stacks there with water because you know, have the uh, stacking uh, solace of the seas pools doing the heal over time and then the shielding from bubble and tempest card. And then you can wait to use your priority of group heal with your restoration stacks built up from your weapon combo. So, I mean, not that that's going to be really playing to uh, a lot of factors because, I mean, you've still got Page of Destiny stacks you have to build up, Purple Healing Ray, stuff like that. But that's that's one example where water is going to be able to exercise that a little bit better. Same thing with Technic with Nature. Nature can set up all the pheromones and then uh, keep doing Flourish and then wait to do uh, the priority with the, with the uh, increased stats. So... Weapon combo wise, same thing. Some healers may use Brawling Shrugman Star Mastery to build it up between. You can still do that, or you could do like a regular bow combo with Flurry Shot. You know, your stacks will be built up a little bit faster with a regular weapon combo, like I just showed. But that's going to be you know, your up to you as a personal healer what weapon combos you like to use. So that's essentially it. Really straightforward in terms of just buffing your stats. Um, Really straightforward to understand, lots of uptime, uh, and it's going to be beneficial, especially for healer role because we don't have any healer role allies. Basically, you're just using like, you know, Batman or Laughs just for the, the critical card procs, the health, stuff like that, 5% restoration increases. And then uh, now you actually have an ally that is useful, not only for DPS stands, like I showed with it, with the power of uh, Shazamily, and then obviously the damage is still going to be increased when that's figured out, but uh, period, uh, purity of heart is going to be definitely a staple for healers going forward, just for uh, base stat increases. So, any other questions about the ally, put them in the comment section, and we'll see you in the next video.